What's up, guys? Back again. You already know who this is. MVP Shear 123R88. You know, back by popular man. Y'all know you wanted some more videos. Y'all know you love watching my videos. Y'all know that I bring the truth to YouTube, to the wrestling community, to the YWC. You all know this. Where have I been? I've been doing videos with Big Jarvis, Mad Scientist, 7890. Go check him out. We just did one ROH versus DG USA. Go check it out. It's fucking great. I'm a DG USA fan. Gotta hype my shit, man. Gotta hype it. Now, you know what we back for. You know, in my last video, I said that we gonna review all three of these shows. Royal Rumble 2001, which we already got to 8.5. No Way Out 2001, which I finished a couple days ago. Gonna review that tonight. WrestleMania 17. Hopefully that'll be up tomorrow. Today though, we gonna review No Way Out 2001. Now this is just a freaking classic show, man. Just great stuff all around. Great storylines. You know, it's probably not better than WrestleMania necessarily. WrestleMania had more on it, more going for it. Maybe even bigger storylines, but. This show as a whole, I don't know if it had bigger storylines. There's, there's some good shit on this card, man. There's some really good stuff on this card. We're going to get to that. We're going to review it all. I got enough time to review all the matches. WrestleMania, I probably won't have enough time to go into too much depth and everything, but I got enough time here. So let's just start right out, man. We got Big Show versus Raven for the hardcore title. You know, this was just a fun way to, you know, kill four minutes. It wasn't the greatest match ever. You know, uh, Crash Holly got in there, Steve Blackman got in there. Um, Hardcore Holly got in, interfered in the match. Billy Gunn came in there. Uh, Billy Gunn won the title, then Raven won the title back, then Big Show won the title. You know, it was just a fun, mindless brawl. Didn't really have any, you know, s you know, super storyline to it or anything. Kind of just made Big Show look like a monster, like he could just take out anybody. You know, they all tried to take him out, and he still came out on top with the title. You know, two stars, nothing really right home about. But you know, you know, not not, not, not a bad way to start the show. Got the crowd pumped for the next match, four way. This is how you do a 12-man four-way. This is this is what I feel like WWE should do more of these. More, you know, four-ways or multi-man matches to get, you know, more young talent on the card and really show them off here. You know, they, they don't show off their young talent enough. Back then, you know, you have Benoit, Jericho, Guerrero, and X-Pac all in this. 12 minutes of just awesome stuff, baby. Four stars, just freaking ridiculous some of the stuff they're doing. Just stiff as all fuck. Just, I mean, this match, just, I can't do this word, this match justice. This match is just crazy. Just stiff strikes, stiff kicks, you know, great moves, lots of suplexes, great finish. Crowd was hot for Jericho winning. You know, this is what the WWE should bring back. If they want to go back to the Attitude Era, they have to bring back these four-man matches. They have to show off some of their younger talent in an environment like this. Because four-man matches are great at hiding people's weaknesses and showing off their strengths. So if guys may not be ready to be in the you know the main event talent, have them fight with Put four guys in a match, show off, showcase their strengths right now. Let them you know grow and, and, and worry about their weaknesses later. Because you know this is what they did back then. They had all kinds of you know just crazy stuff happening in the Attitude Era that that made wrestling fun. If you want to make wrestling fun to watch again, I think bringing back these four matches is a huge thing. You know as 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 you know Matt Thompson said they're bringing back the tag teams would be a big thing. I think bringing back multi man matches like this would be a huge thing too. Then we got Trish Stratus, Stephanie Man Helmsley. Holy shit, did this have a good storyline? Freaking a women's match having a good storyline. Just very rare nowadays. I mean, you know, Trish had a lot of good storylines though back in the day. You know, Stephanie Man, she had her story on Victoria. Her and Lita had a great robbery. They need to bring that back too. You know, it, it made for a, you know, a good part of the show. It, it, it added to the show, in fact. The, the storyline ran from Royal Rumble to, to, to WrestleMania. Watching the whole entire storyline, it's great stuff. It's it's really good stuff. There's not a ton of storylines going on right now that are, are as good as this, and it's a women's storyline. You know, obviously Punk scene is better. Orton and Christian's probably better, too. You know, other than that, you know, this would probably, if this, if this was on SummerSlam, this would probably be the second or third best storyline they have going. And it's for a women's match. So it shows that they actually care to give enough time to the rest of their show. You know, to the women's matches and stuff. You know, Watching Royal Rumble 2001, they had, you know, the Ivory China storyline. Here they have the Steph Trish storyline. They had the Steph Trish storyline last show, too. So, obviously, women back then got a time, you know, to show off their stuff, to show off their mic skills, you know, to even get promos, which we really don't see anymore. They might be bringing that back with Natalia and Beth Phoenix. I really hope they do see in this match. You know, this match had no right to be as good as it was. You know, three stars between two, you know, basically non-wrestlers at the time. You know, Stephanie never was a great wrestler. Trish became a great wrestler. This was way before. This was back in her, you know, you know, 
sex appeal days, I should say, where we didn't look at her as a wrestler. We did, we just looked at her as you know TNA, her tag team, basically. You know, we 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 looked at her as as just you know uh, eye candy, someone to look at. You know, uh, 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 you know, a, a nice you know, I don't know, model figure. You know, I've been tri ah, Trish is gorgeous. Trish is beautiful. We all know that. Um, but you know, this was this was back in a time where that's all we thought she was. I mean, people would say she was a bimbo bitch back then because they they portrayed her to be that. That was her character on TV. And so, you know, coming in here, she shows that she can actually wrestle a pretty good match. And I think a lot of you know, at least male fans started to respect her a lot more and respect that you know she wasn't just something really good to look at. She wasn't say. You know, someone came along later, or Stacey Keebler, a person that was really great to look at, but couldn't put on any matches, and you didn't want to watch them, and you wanted to go take a, you know, that's why the women's match is considered the piss break. So, you know, back in this time, you know, back in, you know, the early 2000s, Trish put on all kinds of great matches. You know, this, this was kind of the starting point, but in 2002, 2003, 2004, she became a really good wrestler, and I'm sure nobody took a piss break during, you know, things like Trish and Lita and Trish and Victoria. So, bringing back, you know, the Divas division, as another thing, you know, back then, back in the Azure era, WWE cared about all their divisions. But I'm probably talking too long about this match. Three stars, probably talking too long about Trish, but this is where she, you know, started to be seen as a great wrestler. Next match. The big one on this show. Three stages of hell. Triple H versus Stone Cold to end their huge, long rivalry. Now, this all started when, you know, Rikishi... Ran over Stone Cold because Triple H was the mastermind behind it. He was the game. He's the cerebral assassin. He told him to. And then Stone Cold dropped Triple H from you know the forklift at Survivor Series 2000. You know, a lot of heat going into this. You know, Stone Cold cost Triple H. Or Triple H actually cost Stone Cold the title first. Then Stone Cold cost Triple H the title at the Royal Rumble. And you know, then Triple H tried to cost Stone Cold the title at, or not the title, the the Royal Rumble victory. He tried to come out there and beat him senseless in the Royal Rumble to try to eliminate him. Stone Cold still ended up winning. So now we get this. Personally, I think that they possibly could have saved this till WrestleMania. I, I think maybe Rock Stone Cold was better fit for WrestleMania for what they're planning on doing. But I think whether this was more of an attraction. And I think you could have easily done this by giving Triple H the title at the Royal Rumble. I'm not going to argue with that, though. I'm not going to argue that what they did was wrong. Because, because I, I can see how they did it. And I can, hindsight's 2020, And I can see that it was a good idea, I think. But also, in some people's minds, it was a bad idea. I love the Stone Cold Tales turn wrestling. And we'll get to that. But, I mean, obviously, it didn't lead to great stuff afterwards. But I loved it when it happened. Uh, you know, so. But this match itself, this match is epic. You know, four and three, four stars. It's ridiculous. The first fall is a straight-up wrestling contest, which is still pretty good. It's not anything great or anything. The second fall is a street fight, which is just ridiculous. Probably the best of the falls. And the third fall is a cage match, which just, you know, is extraordinary to, you know, for the amount of time they've been in the match already to put on, you know, a pretty good little cage match at the end, too. Four and three-fourths. Very close to five stars. I think it kind of dies off more at the cage match part than the street fight. I think the, I think the cage match should have been the best part of it. I think the, if the cage match was the best of the three parts, it probably would have got five stars. But I think since, you know, the middle part was the best, it kind of hurt the ending a little bit, and the ending was kind of deflating. It was kind of like uh, Hakoda versus Kandori, or Kandori, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kandori. It was kind of like that, where it just kind of ended, you know, they both hit each other in the head, and then one fell on top of the other. It's kind of like that, you know, so instead of forearms, it was, you know, weapons. But still, great match. Just fantastic match. If you have, and it seems like this one's like criminally, maybe not underrated or underappreciated by people who have seen it, but I don't see a ton of people really talk about this match, honestly. And I think more people need to see it, because if you haven't seen it, it's not going to waste your 40 minutes. It, it, it's worth, you know, watching. It's worth sitting through all entire 40 minutes of seeing it. There's not any boring parts. The crowd is hot the entire time. You know, you're you're definitely getting your dollar worth with that. I mean, you don't even have to pay for it. It's, it's online. It's actually on my channel. So if you want to check it out, go into the favorite section. Look on my channel. There's a five-part thing in there. It's definitely worth your time. I highly recommend watching that match. Then we get kind of the crap of the night. Um, I originally gave this a dud. I originally just thought it was that bad. I thought it was god awful why it's on the show. But I went back and watched it again. I gave it a half star. 
just made, mainly because the crowd was hot and you know, they didn't there was no bots or anything but it just seemed kind of useless in the in thing you, you know useless on the card it kind of seemed like this could have been saved for something else I get why they did it here then again I'm not necessarily happy they did it here you know it kind of felt like it wasted my time after the great epic we just saw it was King versus Stevie Richards <laughs> I had to think about that one for a long time there. That's how bad this match was. It, it, you know, King shouldn't be wrestling at that time, even back in 01. You know, he didn't do too bad. Steve Richards didn't do bad, but it, it was just a complicated mess. They were trying to portray a good story, but it just was overbooked. It, it was it was just a complete mess in there. The crowd was hot for it. I'm going to give it half a star. It, the crowd, you know, really wanted to see King win because if King won, the cat got naked, which didn't happen. Which which didn't happen, you know. Uh, obviously, the cat cost King the match, and Steve Richards wins. And I'm pretty sure the cat had to join right to censor. Maybe not this time, but but later on she had to. And you know, it was a nothing match. There's nothing really to talk about here. I don't. I mean, I get why I was on the card. I get it was a big story with the cat getting naked. But besides that, it was just it was just it wasn't even worthy of a Raw main event. It wasn't even over, really worthy of a Raw opening match. There was really no point in this. I get it to get over the right center, but there really wasn't that many much point to this. Then we have the triple threat tables match between the champions of Dudley's, Edge and Christian, and Undertaker and Kane. I'm trying to think, yeah, the, uh, the Dudleys were the champions coming in this. Okay, it wasn't Edge and Christian. It was, it was Dudleys. I'm pretty sure I saw this like two days ago. So like, you know, and I'm not great on my history right now in 2001. So excuse me if I'm wrong. This match was okay, you know, three stars, nothing, nothing, nothing great about it, nothing bad about it either, it, it was a solid 12 minute match, there's really not a lot to talk about on this match, I really, you know, I didn't necessarily care for it, I mean, it could have been better, I think, but, you know, it was fine, I'm here and Kane, you know, dominating, and then, I don't know, Haku and Rikishi coming out there and beating them, which let us know where Rikishi is not even on the WrestleMania card, so I don't know why they did all that. You know, they built him up, they had him number 30 in the Rumble, they had him in this, he wasn't even on the WrestleMania card. Where did Rikishi go in this time? I wasn't watching wrestling at the time, so I'd really love to know if you, you want to comment, where did he go? Where, where did he, where, what happened to him at this time? Because I really don't know. We yeah, got three stars, solid. Um, Dudley's win, Dudley's retaining the titles again, leading into WrestleMania 17. Last match of the night, Rock versus Kurt Angle. This was freaking great. Uh, four and a fourth. You know, these guys really went out there and told a great story. The crowd was extremely hot. The crowd might have been hotter, the hottest they were in the whole entire show. It, they, they were going bonkers for this. You know, they, they really want to see Rock win. You know, they put on a, just a great match. It was short. It was criminally short. It was only like 16 minutes. But for the time they had, they put on something really special for the fans. Uh, you know, I've seen people give it four and a half. I'm not going to go that high. I'm going to go four and four. Like I said, you know... I've actually even seen, I think, uh, Mark Pearson gave it four and three-fourths, and almost gave it five without the, the mess up on, you know, the rock hit the rock bottom, and then Creole didn't kick out, but Earl Hebner didn't count three, he said he kicked out, and then Rock looked at him and was like, he didn't kick out, you're going to count three this time, hit another rock bottom, and just stared at him like, you know, you're going to count this this time? So obviously there was a little bit of a mess up there, it, but it doesn't take away with match, I think it adds even a little bit, I actually kind of liked that, kind of enjoyed that. So, four and a fourth. Uh, a great title offense for Kurt Angle. You know, not, he didn't defend it, obviously. He lost with The Rock. But, you know, a, a really good match. You know, probably the second best match in the entire show. They, they, If they would have had a couple more time, more minutes to work with this, it, it would have been on epic territory. It would have got to four and a half, four and two fours. Because they put on, they delivered a really good match. They had the groundwork for something even more special. Didn't quite get there. But still, another you know another great match in Kurt Angle's career. You know, Kurt Angle's had so many great matches, and you know, this is one where he's just starting out, and he showed he can just ha he could hang with the Rock in there. And the Rock like probably gave him his best you know title defense the whole entire thing. Overall show rating, I'm gonna have to go 9.25. You know, but I wouldn't necessarily count the show for that. I wouldn't necessarily dock anything on the show for that. The show itself is very good, but a couple matches just drag it down a little bit. But if you count out those couple matches, this show is awesome. This, this show is was one of the best WWE pay-per-views they've ever put on. Ever. It's one of the best for your top dollar. You know, it's one of the most exciting ones. It's got a ton of good stuff on it that you just want to see. It's got, you know, three four-star matches. So, it, you know, if you count out the crap, it's one of their best pay-per-views they've ever done. I've been MVP Shear, 123R. You've been watching my channel. 
you should subscribe to it. Whatever, it's cool.